Welcome to a new scented video. In today's video, we're going to do fragrance news and having a look at fragrances that were announced as coming out during the month of May. So let's get started. The first fragrance we will look at today is Niche and it's coming to us from the house of Killian. The fragrance is called Straight to Heaven White Crystal Oat and Musk and is an updated version of the Straight to Heaven White Crystal which was introduced in 2007. Let's have a look. So this fragrance will be launched in 2021 and the top notes we have Nutmeg, uh, in the middle notes we have patchouli, cedar and vanilla and in the base we have oud and white musk. The fragrance will be launching in the familiar black bottle with the golden cap. So again, a uh, very stylish presentation. We do have quite a bit of woodsy notes in here and in the base we also have musk but also oud uh, which is new and hence the oud and musk, the name. Uh, and we have nutmeg so definitely something a little bit spicy and quite oudsy. I remember testing straight to heaven uh, and it was heavy on the patchouli which is also present in here. I was not in love with the fragrance. I thought it was maybe a bit too masculine for me to wear. Having said that, I only had the dabber sample from Lucky Scent which we all know. <laughs> they're not the best way to experience the fragrance so maybe it's worth testing like a properly to be able to comment. Looking forward to hearing thoughts on this one and let me know guys if you're excited. Let's move on to the next fragrance. It seems like Oud is a continuous theme here and it's becoming kind of a more introduced to the mass market. Next fragrance is from Victoria's Secret and they are bringing us Bombshell Oud. This fragrance is announced as a sensual uh, and intriguing fragrance uh, that retains the luxury and glamour of the original bombshell but it adds a deep exotic twist. Spicy saffron opens the scent with a zesty mandarin and earthy violet leaf which adds texture. The heart is made of peony as the flower that marks all the scents of the bombshell collection and oud uh, adds complexity and smoky uh, elements to the base of the composition. The fragrance was created by Clement Gavary. The bottle of this is very beautiful. It is their signature bombshell kind of shape. This one has a pink to black ombre with a bow. I have not tried the original bombshell. I think I've only ever had one Victoria's Secret fragrance and I remember loving it, but it was kind of like a limited edition. Uh, I had a look at it in my Fragrantica profile. It's called Rose Caramel and it was beautiful. I really loved that fragrance, but I haven't seen it anywhere since then. And uh, if you're a fan of Victoria's Secret's fragrances, uh, what do you think is something I would try and would like? Exciting, we have just in time for the summer a new Chanel uh, from the Le Oux collection. We do have Paris Edinburgh and this one is, as you know, this line is fresh and really kind of bright, inspired by uh, Coco Chanel's trips uh, to places that are significant in her life. And this one is coming to us in June 2021. The nose behind is Olivier Polch and he describes the fragrance as both fresh and woody. It could be the fragrance of a tweed jacket borrowed from the men's wardrobe that was such an inspiration for Gabrielle Chanel. If we have a look at the notes, we have on the top juniper berries and cypress. In the middle, we have lavender, cedar and vetiver. And in the base, we have vanilla and musk. This is described as woody, aromatic. And I can see this being like the perfect thing to throw on in the summer. I only have uh, Paris Venice so far from this collection and have not tried too many of them. I'm really interested to try more. I really like Paris Venice, the one that I have, and I'm looking forward to wearing it more in the summer. Uh, they're not terribly long lasting. They're meant to be like a refreshing fragrances. And uh, this one seems to be maybe a bit the, on the masculine side or a bit quite less sweet than the one I have. I do like aromatics though, so I'm interested to try this one and see uh, how I think. Next up, a designer fragrance from the house of Trussardi. I really like Trussardi fragrances from what I've tried so far, so I'm kind of interested in this one. Uh, this one is called Trussardi Eau de Parfum and the perfumers are Violin Colas and Julie Mas. In the top notes, we have Italian Mandarin Neroli Tomato Accord. In the heart, we have Jasmine Absolute, White Dahlia and Lavender. 
And in the base we have suede, patchouli and violets. The bottle is pretty stunning, I think really kind of statement in its simplicity. I love the millennial pink, I guess this is kind of a way for them to connect with the newer generation. Um, but I really love also seeing um, the box that it comes in is kind of the same color scheme as the uh, bottle itself. So I'm really interested if I like this fragrance, I'll be very happy to add it to my collection. And looking at the notes, we have mandarin, neroli and the tomato. So I'm kind of looking forward to testing this one out. And then we do have uh, suede, which I love, and a little bit of uh, patchouli and violets, which I guess may be a little bit powdery from the violet and the suede. I'm, I'm quite hopeful that this would be um, perfume that I'm kind of thinking every time I hear suede of Bottega Veneta, I would love it if this is somewhere there along these lines, but I imagine something quite uh, classy um, from what I've tried from the brand so far. So definitely this one, I'll be really happy to test. An extra exclusive on the other end we have from Gucci and their The Alchemist Garden collection which is so stunning. One day I will have one of those beautiful bottles. I don't know which one even to go for. I have to look into the notes. Nothing really jumps out at me as my type of scent but they are also beautiful. But anyways, so the new fragrance that is added to this collection will be only a limited run of 1000 and it's going to be called uh, The Garden and the fragrance is created by none other than Alberto Morias. And let's have a look now at the notes of this one. Uh, I imagine it's quite stunning. Gucci Garden is an amber fuge fragrance for women and men. And the top notes we have broom and violet, in the middle notes we have bergamot and benzoin and in the base we have woodsy notes and sage. The bottle itself is again stunning like all the rest of them, I really love this shape. Really beautiful, um, it's only 1000 uh, copies so I don't think I'm ever going to be lucky enough to get my hands on that but if you do I envy you, let me know what you think of this fragrance. Another designer release and an updated version of a classic we have from Jill Sander, we have Sun, uh, Sun Parfum for women and Sun Men Parfum for men. Uh, if you haven't tried Sun from Jill Sander, it's this very heavy, very uh, round, sunny floral and it's become like a classic. Uh, interesting to see, uh, this one is also again inspired by the Sun and the bottle reminds of the original but it's transparent. Uh, Sun Parfum uh, is available in 75ml, 125ml. Uh, the new fragrance contains honey in the top notes, in the middle notes we have ylang ylang and in the base we have tonka bean. It sounds interesting and quite a bit sweeter than the original uh, Sun. Uh, we have tonka which I love, we have honey and ylang ylang. That would be kind of a sweet, exotic a little bit. Really interested to, to test this one. I've had some sort of version of Sun which was super sharp and soapy and it wasn't my vibe but uh, this one sounds really promising. The male version Sun Men Parfum is available in 40 and 75 milliliter as well and is described as a leather fragrance. In the top notes we have juniper berries and dry wood, in the middle we have clay sage and in the base we have uh, benzoin and leather. Sounds quite good, uh, so might try the male one as well. We are seeing that designers continue to market to women and men, but to be honest, I would be very happy to try both. A fragrance by the house of Louis Vuitton is coming and this one is marketed towards men. It is called Imagination and it's joining their line of male uh, fragrances called Le Parfums. Uh, this one is launching in June 2021. Let's have a look at the notes. So the bottle is clear and the juice inside is kind of like a minty blue, bluish green. Uh, the fragrance itself is described as a citrus aromatic and uh, the nose behind is Jacques Cavalier. The notes are Calabrian bergamot, Sicilian orange and citron. In the middle notes we have Neroli, uh, Nigerian ginger, 
Ceylon cinnamon and in the base we have Ambroxan, Chinese black tea, guayac wood and olibanum. The notes of this one are really interesting to me. I love the combination of citruses at the top. They're all sounding really sparkling. Uh, the middle continues with a, a bit of citrus but then we have ginger and cinnamon to add a bit of spice and I love actually that they have Ambroxan uh, and tea. Don't know how I feel about the oud in this combination, but yeah, this one sounds pretty good to me. And uh, why not try it even if you're not a man? Come on. What is this? <laughs> Stop advertising like this, guys. Like the brands are really should learn to open their horizons a bit. People can test whatever they want. A new fragrance or what sounds to me like a flanker from the house of Nino Ricci. We have Rouge Extra. And Rouge Extra is supposed to launch before the summer of 2021. Uh, it's described as floral fruity gourmand. And the top notes we have grapefruit, raspberry and blackcurrant. In the middle we have rose and tea. And in the base we have praline and vanilla. It sounds like, uh, you know, your quite <laughs> typical female uh, designer fragrance to me. Sweet, floral fruity with a bit of a gourmand in it. Uh, I haven't tested one of the Nino Ricci's fragrances in a long time because I kind of got bored really with the Be Delicious line and there were just too many flankers. So I have not tried uh, many of their fragrances. Uh, which one is your favorite and I think that is kind of like a good uh, starting point to try to kind of go back to uh, testing them. From the Be Delicious line, I actually like the one with the fresh blossom, which one was the pink one. Uh, and other than that, I really can't remember testing their fragrances. Which one is your favorite, guys? And another designer fragrance added to the Juicy Couture line, we have It's Sunny Honey, which is a fragrance that will be added to their Rock the Rainbow edition. It is very kind of this juicy yellow, um, bottle or rather the juice inside uh, with a golden cap. This one is described as a fruity floral and in the notes we have Italian lemon, blood orange, bergamot. In the middle we have honeysuckle, jasmine and peony and in the base we have amber, musk and sandalwood. Again nothing too fancy in the notes but you know uh, it came to my mind um, one saying from uh, my favorite actually fragrance podcast if you haven't listened to them guys go and listen because they're amazing and hilarious and super super informative uh the podcast is called fume chat and the guys there actually said that describing uh what notes are in a perfume is the same as describing what colors are in a painting so now that we are looking at all of these you know notes we don't really know what it ends up being so I can't really know what this might smell like, but it just sounds like a nice, uh, fresh, fruity fragrance for the summer. New release from the house of Diptyque. This one is Ilio and it is a citrus floral fragrance for women and men. Uh, additioning to the lineup of cult loved scents, it comes in their signature bottle. Uh, this one comes as an eau de toilette and hair mist and channels the warm summer air with scents of prickly pear, bergamot, iris and jasmine. Sounds like a very nice fresh uh, scent for the summer. I still have not purchased a diptyque fragrance. I have my eye on quite many of them and I don't know uh, how to pull the trigger and get. I did have like a travel sample of Eau Capital, which I really, really like. And I find it smells very similar to fragrance um, Portrait of a Lady by uh, Frederick Mal, but it is, I think, limited edition and a bit hard to find. Also, I'm thinking of Eau Duel, but I've read contradicting reviews. And yeah, so I don't know where to begin with this brand. We saw also last month they had quite interesting uh, fragrances. I don't think I'll be starting here because I want something maybe a bit more substantial. This sounds really fun and nice for the summer though. We have a new Mancera. I like Mancera. I mean, from what I've tried, at least I like the fact that they are really strong fragrances so that uh, you definitely get a bang for your buck there. This one is called Lovely Garden and is uh, in this beautiful kind of like a purpley pink bottle. I think fuchsia might be used to describe. Uh, this one is described as a sumptuous garden of roses with a fruity and musky uh, undertone. The memory of a sweet sunny day in the shade of a lemon tree. The notes of this is we have pink pepper, cinnamon and red mandarin at the top. 
interesting that we have cinnamon at the top that's and pepper so a little bit spicy there in the middle we have central turkish rose uh, indonesian patchouli leaves orange blossom and tuberose and in the base we have grey amber, sweet toffee and mystical incense and powdery musk. In true Monsera fashion we do have lots of notes, a lot of depth, we have spices, uh, we do have flowers, so there is Turkish rose, we have orange blossom and tuberose and then we have the incense for depth and uh, caramel to add sweetness. So this one sounds pretty lovely and interesting to test. This one is from Carolina Herrera and it's actually for women and men, which I like. Uh, it's called Amethyst Haze and it's coming to their uh, more like an exclusive range, actually called a confidential collection. Let's have a look at this one. This is inspired by the beauty of beautiful Amethyst. Uh, the bottle is made of deep violet lacquered glass with golden details reminiscent of real jewels. All right, let's have a look at the notes though. We have on the top bergamot and pink pepper. In the middle we have cafe and lavender. And in the base note we have bourbon, vanilla, patchouli and cashmere wood. Really excited when I heard bourbon vanilla. Uh, you know I love me a boozy sweet fragrance. And then we have cashmere wood and coffee. Coffee and lavender might be a bit strange. I'm really interested to, to try this one and see what I think. Yeah, interesting. We have cardamom and pink peppers so of spicy and then coffee. Cardamom and coffee are very good uh, pair. So immediately think of Intoxicated by Killian, which is that. But then we have vanilla patchouli cashmere. Yeah, interesting one to try. Um, yeah, I don't know if amethyst is what I'm thinking when I'm reading the notes, but yeah, definitely, definitely interesting. The last two fragrances we have are aimed towards men, or at least that's how they're marketed. One is by Michael Kors and we have Michael Kors Men Extreme Journey. This one is a woody, spicy fragrance. And let's have a, no a look at the notes. We do have on the top juniper oil, pink pepper, cypress oil, grapefruit, geranium. In the middle we have desert woods, papyrus. And in the base we have leather, myrrh and oak moss. Um, this one is inspiration behind the fragrance, capturing the rugged intensity of racing through Sahara sands. Uh, it's powerful blend that drives you deep into the dunes where peppery aromatic desert woods and notes of worn leather run wild. It's supposed to be warm and raw, so sounds good to me. Uh, I wouldn't mind smelling this, to be honest. I really like fragrances that are usually inspired by the desert. They, they tend to have uh, sensuality to them, a bit of hazy, a little bit rough. So that one sounds good to me. We have another male fragrance from the house of Yup or Joup. I don't know how to <laughs> properly pronounce this one. Uh, this one is called Joup Om. Eau de Parfum. The colors of the bottle are promising to me. I'm expecting something deep and resinous. Let's have a look at the notes. We have bergamot, cinnamon, bark oil, fresh hazelnut. Wow. In the heart we have orange blossom, heliotrope, cardamom oil, pine needle oil. In the base we have tonka bean absolute. Yes. Vanilla. Yes. Sandalwood. Yes. Moss, cashmeran and vetiver. Lots of interesting notes. So this one definitely uh, sounds really appealing to me. I would love to smell this one. And I think I've only ever had, no, I think I've tried two fragrances by the House of Youp. One was back in the day, they're both from back in the day. I think one of them is called La Ban. I did have like a 40 ml of that, pretty nice. And the other one was all about Eve, but I have never smelled any of their main fragrances, but if they're anything like this one, it sounds really good. So definitely curious. Editing Stella here by the time this video goes out. Uh, there are new launches that I want to make sure to get out to you guys of uh, this month. And the first one is from La Perla who are launching a new fragrance called La Perla Signature Eau de Parfum. This new creation was signed by the perfumer Louis Turner and it announces as an elegant floral bouquet, as radiant, layered and confident as the La Perla woman. Uh, I really like the bottle, um, it plays up with the name of the brand, La Perla. Uh, the composition of La Perla Signature Eau de Parfum opens with a zesty floral top notes, touched by the green elegancy of violet leaves, with a slight cucumber vibe and nuances of fresh cut grass. 
The heart reveals delicate jasmine sambac sweetened with notes of nectarine, lingering with a texture dry down of cedarwood and seductive vetiver. I have not tried many La Perla, so definitely looking forward to that one. And our last release for this video I'm really excited about because um, as you maybe know, maybe not, I also do fashion illustration. So for me, seeing this release is really exciting because it collides two worlds. Uh, this one is by Miu Miu and they are presenting a fragrance collection that changes fragrance into fashion accessory. The Italian fashion brand Miu Miu under the license of Coty that sometimes is not a good thing, presents a new, very attractive line of four fragrances, Les Ux à la Mode. By the way, saying this, I am reading the brand script. So um, basically, I'm, I'm not saying that they are very exciting. That's what the brand is saying. <laughs> I have not tested them. The new line invites us to dress up uh, our fragrance by choosing our favorite of four types of scents, uh, four types of top cases and four types of bottom cases, simply to suit our mode and style. The first fragrance is called Daring Darling and is a floral fruity fragrance composed by the perfumer Alexis uh, Dadier uh, or Dadier. The fragrance combines notes of juicy blackcurrant and lush roses calmed with lavender and musk. The second one is called Eyes on Me and offers a joyful gourmand composition uh, created by Daniela Roche Adrier. The third fragrance is called Head in the Clouds. It contains fresh and crisp rhubarb accord in the opening, combined with romantic peony note, layered on warm and calm amber and musky notes. And the last fragrance called Serio Player, not what I was thinking. <laughs> Uh, and it offers sparkling and romantic composition created from a fruity and fresh lychee accord, sunny orange blossom and soft vanilla trail. This was all for this month's releases. Let me know in the comments, did you find something that you would be interested to purchase or try? Did something catch your eye? Did something sound interesting? I don't think something stood out to me to the point that I'm like, take my money but then again I haven't tried any of them so uh, yeah we shall see leave your comments down below and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video bye